Hello and welcome to PocketGamer.biz's weekly news roundup. I'm John Jordan and this is the uh, excuse me news roundup for the week ending the 17th of October. Um, so this time last week I was actually in uh, Lithuania in the capital Vilnius. So we were over there um, for a conference called Live Mobile. So it's one of the kind of a, I guess a, a fairly regional kind of conference looking at uh, mobile games and apps. Um, and it was interesting. Never been to, to Vilnius before. And it's kind of interesting to travel around some of these kind of uh, Nordic and Baltic states and kind of see the the local kind of environment, what's going on there, um, and and there's kind of actually quite a lot going on in, in Vilnius. So one of the big developers there is, is called Nord Current, and they've been there for a, a long time now, kind of quite going under the radar, but they're like a 60, 60 strong team. Um, they used to do console games, now pretty heavily in, into mobile, um, kind of moving into, they were casual games, um, 101 games was their, was their big hit, and now they're moving into more, I guess, kind of... Um, Kind of, uh, kind of, I guess, casual simulation type games. So it's interesting to see those guys. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons we were there, and one of the reasons that the conference is there this year, is because um, Game Insight, who are pretty well known, uh, pretty massive um, Russian publisher, well, they've actually moved their um, kind of HQ operations. So they moved from Moscow um, to to Vilnius. Um, obviously, part of that re reason is because because um, Lithuania is in the EU, so that's probably um, slightly more um, kind of uh, business friendly. And actually, as we found out, kind of at the conference, and, and there were quite a lot of kind of news uh, news breaking at the conference about what's happening in Lithuania. Um, and we learned that Lithuania has the fourth lowest um, corporation tax in in the EU, which is I guess, a good place to put your company. Um, and also, um, I guess another good place to the reason to start a company in in Lithuania is it has the third lowest wages in the EU, which obviously for Lithuanians isn't a, is a bad thing. Um, but I guess that the idea is that for the government. Um, we encourage companies to set up um, in Lithuania because um, the wages are much lower than other parts of the EU and over time that will drive wages up. Um, and equally there's also um, part of the uh, games industry moving to, to Vilnius that they, they've announced with the, the mayor of Vilnius and, and other kind of investment companies and things that they're they're refurbishing a 200 year old um, hospital and that's going to be kind of um, refurbished over the next um, nine months or so and that's going to be a, a technology hub um, partly for games industry to, to relocate um, some of their staff there and equally for, for local companies and, and incubators and all that kind of stuff. So that was kind of interesting from a kind of structural point of view to see what's going on, going on in Lithuania. Um, in terms of the conference, there was, I guess, the usual array of people talking about um, user acquisition and uh, people like me talking about games journalism, um, things like that. Um, but one, one interesting thing that kind of did, did kind of tie into some extra news this week was um, someone who used to work at uh, Zepto Labs. So, um, Obviously, well known for cut the rope, and they've done uh, an awful lot of merchandise. Oh, okay, I'm going to say an awful lot of merchandising. Actually, not an awful lot of merchandising. But they've, been, they've they've been kind of quite. Um, they've done merchandising, but but in 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 quite a um, kind of uh, a smart way, really. They, they've they've obviously got the nom nom character, um, om nom, I should say, um, who who is very kind of cuddly and, and plushable. So that they've kind of done that, but they've not gone too far. So I guess the other interesting news a couple of weeks ago was Rovio letting go some people, and that was partly seen. Um, as Rovio is probably the, the arch archetype of, of over um, licensing um, Angry Birds, which Angry Birds has gone on clearly on, on everything from, from cola to uh, bedspreads to playgrounds to um, kids' tattoos, so all, all manner of crazy things on Angry Birds. But anyway, so, um, so um, they were talking about licensing and merchandising, and, and the view was that um, you have to be a bit careful with games. You, know, you can't just say, hey, I've got a hit game, and that means I'm good at licensing. You have to have characters, obviously, and, and something a bit more subtle is you have a hit game, but do you have a brand? So you might have a quite strong game uh, in terms of like kind of uh, user numbers or, 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 or monetary revenue, but that's not necessarily mean you have a brand. And really, to do licensing and to sell things that are based on the characters in your game, you need something a bit more kind of untangible. I mean, a, a tangible thing that came out of it, there was um, a person from Zeptolabs reckoned um, you need, as a rule of thumb, you need 100 million, 100 million, sorry, 10 million monthly active users or monthly active players as we like to say um, that, that's kind of a, a, she, what she thought was the, was the borderline between um, having a kind of a big enough audience which is pretty interesting um, I guess particularly uh, I think Cut the Rope has about um, 70 million players actively every month um, and Angry Birds at one point I think had 100 and, 163 million um, active players every month anyway um, kind of the reason that news was interesting because um, it transpired this week um, that uh, Supercell so the, uh, the, the, the I guess the in, in, in Finnish talk the um, the current hot company taken over from Rovio so the developer of, of, of games like uh, or games like or games that are um, Clash of Clans Heyday and Boom Beach um, they're looking to hire some licensing people 
specifically for merchandising, which is kind of interesting because um, while the games are obviously enormously successful and kind of to a degree have strong characters, those characters are not necessarily... Um, I mean, you could even argue that the Angry Birds, like a Red Bird or a Black Bird, or, or you know, um, they when they started out, they were quite generic characters who kind of, but they grew into characters, I guess, the Red Bird in particular. But um, so the Clash of Clans, you have you have the Barbarian, you have the Archer, and you have these kind of generic um, strategy characters. Can they become, you know, how would you, how would you license them and brand them? Um, uh, I guess that's what the people who who Supercell employ will will be thinking about this um, over over the coming months um so what other news has been going on i guess the, the kind of i don't know it's the, the news of the week or the or the damp squib, squib of the week or um depends on how, how you view these things i guess was um apple announcing some more ipads so you know in in, in, a, in a technological point of view obviously these are incredibly um sophisticated kind of bits of hardware now you know every time now it's they're thinner and they're lighter but they do more than before and you know and, and it would be easy to um Kind of poo-poo the the advances that go into to, to making these devices. In, particularly if you go go back and think about the original iPad, which actually I quite liked, but you know it was it was a heavy big block of aluminium. You know things have moved on a lot a lot since then. Um, and I had to laugh really because um because in Apple in it in its kind of like tech marketing kind of a talk called it a magical piece of glass. So the the um I think it was particularly the iPad Air 2 is a magical piece of glass that's so light you can hold it all day, hold it up all day long. Um, which made me think, if it, actually if it was a magical piece of glass out of a fairy story, it would obviously just hover. Um, but maybe that's one for uh, for Tim Cook to announce in, in another year, the, the, the hoverable iPad. Um, but I guess, I, th I think, while, while negative would be wrong, it has been interesting for the, for the first time, press kind of coverage of the of the Apple announcement has kind of been kind of low-key, you could call it. And I think that there's been some kind of interesting... Um, kind of commentary that that now with the iPad you originally started out with an iPad that was fine it was upgraded iPad one two three four iPad Mini came out um, that was fine that was obviously different it was a smaller iPad so you had an iPad and iPad Mini but now um, we had there's actually five so Apple is actually selling actually promoting five different um, iPads so you have two standard iPads you have the iPad Air and iPad Air two and then you have three iPad Mini so you have the iPad Mini the iPad Mini 2, originally called the iPad Mini with Retina Display, thank goodness they've changed that, and now the new iPad Mini 3. Um, so I guess part of the reason is the original iPad Mini still exists, it's the only one without a Retina Display, that means it can be considerably cheaper. So it's actually, um, they cut the price of, 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 of the three existing iPads, so the iPad Mini um, is now $249, which um, $50 cheaper than the than the um, iPad Mini 2, which has the Retina display, but $50 doesn't seem very much for us in the West, but obviously in the emerging markets that can be quite a big draw. I guess the interesting thing is why Apple still has the iPad Mini 2 at $299. That would kind of be the, seem to be the obvious one to, to drop in terms of the iPad Mini 3. I'm sure that would happen at some point. I'm sure lots of clever people in Apple in marketing have kind of thought about the reasons for doing this, but um, it has kind of sparked some interesting kind of debate and uh, Keith has written a, um, an opinion piece um, kind of looking at how, you know, in the days of Steve Jobs, Apple was a very different company facing the consumer. It was a, it was a visionary company and, and created these kind of products that had never been seen before. I guess iPad being the, the particular version. We've never seen a tablet computer before quite like that. We didn't know we needed one. And then we apparently, 225 million of us do, or that's how many they've sold at least. Um, but now, I guess with T Tim Cook, Tim Cook, he, w he was the operations guy at Apple. Um, before he became CEO, and it's much, Apple is much more an operations company now. It's not necessarily. I mean, you could argue whether the Apple Apple Watch is is, is a is an innovation or not. I guess we we'll, don't really know until it comes out. But Apple is much more seems to be geared around um, operations, and even when it comes to iPhones now, obviously you have the iPhone six and the iPhone six plus, and you have the iPhone five S. Um, so you have these kind of. I mean, fragmentation is probably the wrong word to use compared to Android fragmentation, which is proper. You know, fragmentation across many devices and. Um, and manufacturers, but even within Apple now, you've kind, of, you kind of seen what used to be a very small number of um, kind of devices is now spread into families of things. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, that was kind of the uh, some of the interesting news that was happening um, this week. Come back next week and hear some more.